I recently took apart a dome light, very similar to this one, but the other one had an MP3 player in it, and it was very simple. It had a motor continuously rotating, rotating inside and a loose circuit board that just rode on the motor. So the circuit board itself didn't rotate, but it just went in a sort of like circular fashion. It sort of rev <laughs> How would you describe that? Um, a cyclic movement. There, there's probably a name for that. Anyway, this one is different. This one not only has a stepper motor underneath here, uh, can you see a stepper motor, stepper motor? Uh, but it has DMX functionality. Well, how good that is, I'm not really sure. I've not tested it yet. That will come later because I've not got a lighting desk here. So starting with uh, important things, this, it does have a fuse in the plug here. This is a standard uh, 13 amp uh, plug as used in the UK. And these uh, have fuses, and if I plug this in now, it shouldn't actually do anything. Now that I've removed the fuse, that's a good sign. The fuse itself is 13 amp, which is the incorrect value. It should have been 3 amp for something like this. Um, just because 3 amp is a standard value. The official values of these fuses are 3 and 13 amp. But you do get various other values like 1 amp, 3, 2, 5, 10, um, and of course 13. Or, um, if you go to special eBay sellers, you can get 20 amp fuses, apparently, which is in contravention of the electrical standard. But that's a minor technicality. So let me plug this in and show you what happens. And the first thing you're going to see is this thing is going to rotate to a home position. Stall. Then it will light up, swap the camera out completely in the process, and it starts basically going backwards and forwards and going through colours. And if you click the button here, Sorry about the swamping out on the screen, this is what happens, you get bright sources. If you click the button, you can select various, oh, horrible flashy strobe mode. You can select uh, various combinations of colours and cycles. And one of the odd things about this is the LEDs are in pairs, so at the moment red and yellow are lit. Now this is quite important because um, this circuit uses resistors to limit the current. And if I measure the voltage, hold on, I shall measure the voltage. Let's uh, let's unplug the LEDs for a start. That's going to be a good idea. That's going to... Oh, no, it's a regulated circuit. It should be absolutely fine. So if I plug this in now... Actually, you know what? Let's uh, kill two birds with one stone. If I take uh, the LED module out of this, like this, it will also show how the unit gets its initial position. Oh dear, is this going to work? No, it's coming out, it's alright. So the stepper motor has a shaft with a little screw. Uh, it's got a hole through it and a nut and screw has been put through. And you've got the two pillars here. One is uh, good for the screw, the other is just sort of alignment. It just sits in that, but it also sticks up quite high. And when you initially power this up, the motor turns round to the point it stalls against that pillar and then it can't go any further. Now, the, I think this type of um, stepper motor actually has a little clutch, slip clutch in it. But in this case, uh, it actually sounds like it stalls and just skips magnetically, which is fairly commonly used in the entertainment industry for the older stepper motor type lights and, and indeed some of the modern ones. And once it's got that position, it sort of creates that as a zero reference position and will always just nudge around to it. And if you were to actually uh, get in the way and install that so it's skipped, then it will just use that as a new reference position. It's a very rough and ready way of getting alignment. And uh, the reason it has that partial movement is simply so because the wires are attached. There's no slip rings. It doesn't want this to go round and round. It's a very cheap and simple way of avoiding slip rings. So, while this is uh, running backwards and forwards, while it's powered up, let's bring in the wee cheapy dinky meter that I got more as a novelty than anything else, but it's turning out quite useful because it's all I've got here at the moment. And noting that the polarity is completely wrong, the red and black wires are swapped, and it doesn't matter which way you put the lead in round. Um, I think, is that right? Yes, it doesn't matter which way you put it round, the polarity, red and black is wrong. So let's uh, put red and black and black and red, and the voltage we're getting is 12 volts. Now, that is quite important. It's just over 12 volts. That is extra important because the red and yellow LED have a combined forward voltage of about 4 or 5 volts total. 
Usually it's about two volts uh, for the sort of the gallium arsenide type technologies used for that. The other ones will have a four, combined forward voltage because they're sort of gallium nitride based, the phosphor and uh, the blue and green. They uh, will have a combined forward voltage of six volts, but that still means that from that power supply, six volts is being dropped across most of these resistors, except for one of them, which is dropping between... Uh, 7 and 8 volts at whatever current's going through those uh, LEDs. And that means that those resistors do... I mean, I can't even read the colour bands on them properly because they've changed colour slightly, I think. And one of the notable things when I was testing this was it started smelling of hot resistors. It started uh, smelling so bad, in fact, that I promptly turned it off while I was at the student accommodation because there was a smoke detector overhead. And that's never a good thing. So let's uh, get some of these circuit boards out and take a look at them. Let's... Uh, Unplug the stepper motor. Let's unplug the DMX network. Uh, I should be able to leave that in. Let's get the power supply out. Oh, notable feature. There is a fuse in this. Fuse. Out next to the DMX connects the mains inlet. It is not connected. But having said that, keep in mind that in the UK, our square pin plugs do have a fuse in them. So that uh, makes that less critical. But yeah, it's a bit odd. I suppose they had to fill the hole up somehow. So let's get the power supply out. Let's just chop this. And the reason I'm chopping it is because I'll just be salvaging components out of this. I want to do some tests later on, but I'm traveling at the moment and taking a huge chunk of unnecessary plastic is just a sort of, it, it's just unnecessary. So let's remove the motor. That's why I already got rid of the dome before this point, because the the dome is just one of those pattern lens domes that shoots the light out in lots of beams. Quite nice effect, but bulky for for your postage, your postage, your um, luggage. It's notable that this power supply has that similar. It's I think it's similar to one I've looked at already, maybe in the similar package. This uh, screwdriver is not compatible with these screws. That's a minor technicality again. I'll just uh, keep bludgeoning away with unreasonable force until it fits. So here's the power supply. The power supply is the same old story. Really good separation up to the point it was defeated by the op twice later in that vicinity. They're using an even tinier class Y suppression capacitor. That's just not really up to standard at all, that one. It's tiny. That's minute. Um, yet these connectors are, you know, depending on which one you put it in, the polarity is reversed. In one of the other units I looked at recently, um, they had the two connectors. So if you took the thing apart and didn't know which connector it was, when you put this pair of wires back on, if you got them in the wrong connector, it would potentially fry the electronics. Nice. Good feature. It's got optoisolator feedback that this is... I'm getting deja vu off this circuit board because I'm pretty sure it's identical to one in one of the other lights. It's got the, the power comes in, it goes through a fuse, a uh, bridge rectifier, capacitor here, which is rated 6.8 microfarad, 400 volts. I'm definitely getting deja vu here. Chong X. Is it Chong X? I think it is. For those of you saying, uh, why don't you discharge it first? Hold on. Uh, it's discharged. Uh, the... Chip is a, you know, I don't even see a number in this chip. Where's my little magnifying glass? I'm not seeing any mark in that at all, but I know it's going to be an absolute bog standard uh, switch mode chip. Uh, I, I see the, the same pattern of components. The, the diode, capacitor and resistor used as a sort of snubber to take off the sharp spike and protect the transistor inside when it uh, opens in this uh, flyback arrangement. And then the... Uh, this little, little electrolytic is used for the internally derived supply, and then this little decoupling capacitor is used in conjunction with the optisolator to provide controlled feedback without excessive oscillation, I'd guess. And lots of holes that don't even... Hold, these holes don't even go into anything. That's weird. They're just holes in the circuit board. One is actually going right through one of the tracks. That's weird. Um, so a very standard arrangement. The optisolator is powered by a uh, resistor in series with a zener. Yes, it is. Uh, which means that roughly at that voltage, it's not that critical. It will turn the optoisolator LED on. That will shut that off when the voltage is high enough in the output here. The output is just through a diode capacitor. That's it. Really simple switch mode power supply. I'm not sure what the isolation is going to be like in the transformer. I've got a device that can test that. It should be wingnet's way. 
to the lab soon. So um, let's get this out. This is really not coming out easily. This screwdriver is really not quite compatible with these screws. But that's okay. Brute force and ignorance always wins. So what am I expecting? I'm expecting the processor chip. I'm expecting a little uh, parallel uh, shift register, sort of serial to parallel converter for driving the display, which seems very common in these type of units. I'm expecting, um, uh, let's see, the, the DMX receiver chip, the serial parallel, the processor itself, and then maybe just three transistors in the vicinity of these resistors here for driving the LEDs, and that's more or less going to be it. Oh, um, it's driving the stepper motor, so maybe a little Octo Darlington driver as well. Okay, let's uh, see if I'm correct. Magnifying glass, going to get down here, get comfortable. Mmm, I'm going to get nice and comfortable for this one. That's a cake farts reference. Uh, so the processor is... is that an ST processor? ST8S003F3PG by the look of it, or 6, I'm not sure that one is. The chip here, um, let's see, with that chip up there is probably the... it's a ULN2003, so that, that is a ULN2003. Can I actually... Can I actually show you this? Is, is it going to is it going to focus on that? It's not really working that well, is it? You're getting lots of images of the fluorescent tubes lighting this. I can already tell that's the uh, DMX receiver chip. And that will be the display driver, which will be a standard 74HC type chip. Which is really lightly marked. Oh, that is very lightly marked. But, I might be wrong, TM1635. And very, very tiny text underneath it is absolutely unreadable, even with a magnifying glass. That's not very impressive. Oh, not sure. That is tiny. So, that's pretty much as expected. And as with all these devices, I kind of prefer just to pick the this film that they put over the display is used during manufacturing. It's used for protection, but it's also used during manufacturing because it's sort of pressed in when they pour the resin in. It sort of stops it flooding out the front when they fill these display segments up. Oh, and uh, there's the three transistors. One, two, three little transistors. It's pretty much textbook and a little 5-volt voltage regulator, 70L05. That's just pretty much what you'd expect. The opto, the op, sorry, the, the audio input is got a single transistor by the look of it for buffering it up, and will then go to the microcontroller. It's uh, analog to digital conversion, probably, to actually get converted into a meaningful effect. It has an extra socket output for a remote control facility, and it has an extra socket out which could be used for the fan. It's very stereotypical. You know, it's just modular. It's got the power supply, the driver, the LED, and in this case, a little generic stepper motor of the type that is often used for operating the ventilation louvers in air conditioning. It's very cheap and common. Um, yeah, but it's quite interesting. It's quite neat. I'm going to have to have a further play around with this.